As one would come to realize, while traversing such fields of research as we do, you will inevitably come face to face with a worthy adversary. That foe, of course, is modern paradigm. Often scoffed at when discussing the possible existence of a highly trained, highly secret group of worldwide individuals who are tasked with the protection of a profitable lie. Often labeled a conspiracy theorist due to the vast array of missing evidence and stolen relics. Yet, alas, regardless of this, we feel it is our duty to vindicate all those who have suffered for doing nothing more than tell the truth. Many thanks to Will Hart over at Nexus Magazine in Spain for his exhaustive research. Let's start with a familiar friend, the Great Sphinx. In 1993, NBC aired a show titled The Mysteries of the Sphinx. During the show, geological evidence was shown which indicated that the Sphinx was vastly older than Egyptologists currently claim. This evidence has subsequently become popularly known as the water erosion controversy. The self-taught Egyptologist John Anthony West first brought the evidence to the attention of geologist Dr. Robert Schock. Now, after thoroughly studying the Sphinx firsthand, numerous geologists share West's conclusions, and many have announced their findings to the world. Dr. Zawi Hawass, along with the Egyptian antiquities, have launched a barrage of public criticism at this new evidence. Renowned Egyptologist Dr. Mark Lehner who is regarded as the world's foremost expert on the Sphinx, also joined this attack, publicly declaring West and Shock as ignorant and insensitive. The smear campaign was ultimately a success, and squashed any further exploration of the theory. This, regardless of the overwhelming evidence supporting their claims. And this intellectual mudslinging is unfortunately quite common. The case of author Michael Cremo could be seen as a well-documented example of this, and it also exposes just how the scientific establishment openly uses pressure tactics on the media and government to stifle historical truths. In Michael's book, Forbidden Archaeology, he examines many artifacts that prove modern man's antiquity far exceeds the age currently accepted by academia. In 1996, when NBC broadcasted a special program called The Mysterious Origins of Man, they covered material from Cremo's book. The reaction from the scientific community could be seen as verging on ridiculous. NBC was deluged with letters from furious scientists and others within certain fields who all called the producer a fraud and the whole program a hoax, even attempting to force NBC to not rebroadcast the popular program ever again they went to the tremendous effort of presenting a case to the federal government, requesting that the Federal Communications Commission step in and bar NBC from airing the program again. This was not only an apparent infringement of free speech and a blatant attempt to thwart commerce, but up to that point, it was an unprecedented effort to censor intellectual discourse. Dr. Virginia Steen McIntyre would also feel the cold hands of conspiracy. A geologist working for the U.S. Geological Survey, she was dispatched to an archaeological site in Mexico with the task of dating a group of artifacts. This particular case, again, perfectly illustrates just how far this elusive establishment is willing to go to guard orthodox tenants. McIntyre used state-of-the-art equipment to date the relics, but her results were off the charts. The lead archaeologist expected a date of 25,000 years or less, yet she found dates of 250,000 years or more on multiple occasions. A dating of 25,000 years is conveniently critical to the Bering Strait crossing theory. Once her results were realized, the head archaeologist decided to dispose of Steen McIntyre's results. She has since found it hard to get her papers published, and she has also lost a teaching job at an American university. These sorts of scenarios from these particular types of people is what drives us to expose the truth. No one should lose their career because they are doing it correctly. Unfortunately, however, unless there is a dramatic shift within our own society, stories such as these are likely to continue. Many ancient sites found scattered all over the planet share an enigmatic feature. A pattern of scarring left upon their megalithic blocks and often upon their walls, once left by a technology built by an as yet not understood civilization. 
We've previously covered the perplexing technique often used by ancient wall builds, found all around the world in the form of mysterious metal clamps. Used to seat huge stone blocks as they settled over the following years, these clamps dated to similar times within antiquity and varying in style from continent to continent somehow turned up all over the world at around the same time, strongly suggesting some form of intercontinental travel and thus sharing of technologies. Furthermore, and perhaps more intriguing, are the links that we, here on the channel, along with others in alternative research, and even funded institutes from nations around the world, have begun to notice, and hopefully triangulate, a signature left by this once highly advanced group of individuals. The most noticeable of these sites, and the one which initially started us upon this journey, was Long Yu Cave in China. A cave system hewn from solid bedrock, leaving no waste piles of stone anywhere marking the stone with a telltale scar pattern. These parallel marks are not just found at Longyu. Similar yet not identical marks have also been found elsewhere on Earth. A slight variation in style is what one would expect with shared knowledge. As with the metal clamps, a slight variation can be found from continent to continent. These similar marks can also be found at the ancient quarry of Yangshan, China, and Petra in Jordan, and both argued for years to actually be the workmanship of a civilization far older than any noted within modern academia. These marks were then discovered to be upon the ceiling of Cave 1 at the ancient site of Mamalapuram within India, another site which in places shows levels of erosion far in excess of that which should be seen at a site dated within known history. Yet perhaps the most impressive of these marks, and most probably the ones made by the conceptual machine of origin, are the scars witnessed and now subsequently catalogued at Baalbek. These are far too large for any hand tool, made into solid granite with such precision. These also display circular motions, as if left by a modern-day tunnel boring machine. This evidence, undoubtedly unnoticed upon many more ancient sites, is clearly compelling evidence to support our channel's hypothesis that a mysterious history once occurred here on our planet, and will hopefully shed some light on the amazing people responsible for this phase of our past. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Just how old is human civilization? It should be clear to anyone who has spent any length of time perusing our channel that the majority of our antiquity, no matter how astonishing, is, according to modern academia, all built by our less capable ancestors, placed considerably more recently within human history. During our extensive research, we have often unearthed overwhelming evidence for an immensely larger human timeline. Additionally, we feel there is strong evidence to suggest that more than one period of prosperity has been experienced in the past. We have realized that this record of past global inhabitancy is merely limited to its resistance to erosion. Put another way, there appears that many past civilizations have come and gone going back beyond what is now still in existence. The human species, it seems, has outlived the existence of our oldest ruins here on Earth. Many ruins we have explored are now argued as geological formations. This authoritative subjection is merely testament to their immense age, and also begs the question what other ruins may have been lost to erosion. How much older does human civilization actually reach back in time? and just how advanced have past civilizations become? One clue to this answer lays within the ruins themselves. Astonishing feats of engineering that not only indicate a high level of intelligence, but also technological prowess. Extraordinarily refined works, which can still be found in the less inhospitable environments of Earth. One of these lesser shared sites is undoubtedly Varangal. Located within the South Indian state of Telangana, it was predictably once snapped up by our less capable ancestors, possibly claimed as their own, subsequently becoming their capital. Home of the Kakatiya dynasty from the 12th to 14th centuries, this inhabitation, we feel, has then been used regardless of the ancient ruins in question to age the stone carvings which can be found at the site. Stone monuments carved with such accuracy, skill, and precision that they evade any logical explanation as to how they could have been completed with any of the technologies we know were available to the Kakatians 
specifically within the 12th century. The site clearly demonstrates tremendous skill and also technological prowess. These stone monuments were clearly not only created to express an artistic message, but they were undoubtedly created to display the creator's capabilities, encapsulated in time, quite possibly for the exact purpose of people like us to recognize them, as they may have with similar ruins that were possibly in existence during their own lifetimes. There is a greatly more interesting and extensively larger story to tell regarding the history of our planet. However, as long as those in power feel inadequate simply saying, we don't know, ignorance and lies will continue to plague our species. There have been many occasions here upon our channel where we have explored artifacts and evidential ruins indicative of a tremendous prehistoric age. Testimonies, photography, even physical proofs, locations of some finds making their ages undeniably enormous. This, along with the sheer amount of said evidence collected and exposed over the years, making their authenticity and indeed the evidence to suggest the existence of a now lost yet once incredibly ancient civilization overwhelming. With our next expose of ancient finds of no exception, although the following could have been aiding in the expansion of mankind's knowledge of its origins, it has instead been quietly ignored by those in favor of doubling down on a funded paradigm, one seemingly crumbling around them. Greece, a thorn in the side of many an academic for centuries, with unexplainable architecture and finds that simply lack explanation. There exists, however, a far deeper reason for this persisting annoyance the competing recordings of finds made far before any funded paradigm had arisen by people in positions of specialist authorities, documentation of remains of human inhabitation supporting our many videos' subject matters. These finds dated within the Pliocene era of at least some 2 to 5 million years ago. As mentioned in The Forbidden Archaeologist by Michael Cremo, quote, Today, scientists say that the oldest evidence for human presence in Greece can be found at the Petrolona site, where human bones and artifacts, attributed to our archaic Homo sapiens, go back to between 200,000 and 500,000 years ago. But taking the role of the Egyptian priest, I might say to these modern Solons that the history of a human presence in Greece goes much further back than they might imagine. The Greek scientist who reported the Petrolona discovery, A. N. Polianos, announced further discoveries far more ancient than Petrolona Man. The Anthropology Museum of Petacus gave the following information. In 1977, Isaac Pandelidis, the owner of a sand pit not far from the village of Perticus, chanced upon the remains of a large animal. He informed the Greek Anthropological Society, and the excavations were directed by the anthropologist Eris Polianos, who brought to light the skeleton of a mammoth, approximately 3 million years old. Though the entire skeleton was found, the bones were in disarray and had evidently been killed, butchered, and consumed by humans." End quote. This timeline flies in the face of modern evolutionary chronology and, if accepted as it should, coming from legitimate sources who documented said finds correctly, the timeline of man should rightly be pushed back to an unknown origin, and we strongly feel more effort should be put into this investigative direction. The mammoth, along with Cremo's effortless correlation of the facts, is a gem of proof and a continued glimmer of hope that if such finds continue to surface, modern paradigms will slowly shift to a more critically established realization of not only our history, but of our existence itself. It was a find, and indeed is a journey, which we find highly compelling. We recently made a community post pertaining to the remarkable, yet little known or indeed studied discovery made within the extremely ancient city of Petara in modern-day Turkey. And due to popular demand, we are going to cover this peculiar artifact in greater depth. As mentioned, although there are many archaeological sites within Turkey, and particularly within this region, this peculiar feature is rarely discussed within modern academic or archaeological circles, and once you realize what this enormous relic might have once been, you may realize why. 
Known as the ancient aqueduct of Patera, it was once a series of tubular systems hewn from solid sandstone, presumably running from settlement to settlement. Some parts clearly displaying a significant level of erosion, indicating a truly colossal antiquity that has, unfortunately, made reconstruction of some of the pipes quite difficult. Claimed to be that of the Romans, used for transportation of water, however, what is interesting regarding Patera, and indeed many other ancient sites claimed by the Romans as their own constructions, is that it too holds some unexplainable features, things that separate it from the other, more standard Roman architecture. It seems for many ancient, highly eroded sites found around our world, the culprit for construction is often put upon the most convenient candidate, completely absent of any explanation regarding construction. In 1993, a monumental pillar was discovered at Patera, on which is a Greek dedication to Claudius and an official announcement of the building of roads by the governor, Quintus Veranius Nepos, in giving place names and distances, essentially an entire public itinerary. Yet, alas, they forgot to mention the enormous undertaking that was the aqueduct. One has to wonder, where did the Romans get all their ingenious ideas? Were they all originals? Or perhaps, as we have posited in the past, akin to the ancient Egyptians, had some helpful head starts from a once far more capable, far more knowledgeable people who left structures still standing to this day? The little research that we have unearthed regarding the original site does indeed indicate that Patera's ancient piping system is in fact not Roman, but the origin of the Romans' inspiration when it came to the creation of their own piping systems. Even the original settlement and building of Patera was attributed to and named after Patera, son of Apollo, a great deity, a mythical figure. It pertains to a first, highly eroded, perplexing stretch of 5.4 kilometers along the steep western slope of Kisla Mountain, down to the community of Akbel. Details from RomanAqueducts.com regarding the research is as follows, quote, It originally consisted of a masonry channel, presumably of Hellenistic age, of which only scant relics remain. This stretch was later replaced, probably by the Romans, by a single line of 55 to 58 centimeter long ceramic pipes. The pipeline was laid directly on the ground, alongside the abandoned channel, and locally positioned on low rocks or in cut rocks." End quote. Are we looking at a far more ancient, far more advanced relic than one is first led to believe? A relic later replicated to a certain degree by the Romans for their own ends. We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. We have, in the past, explored, although albeit briefly, the astonishing, perplexing, and as yet unexplained ancient ruins that can be found within the ancient city of Aksum, located within modern-day Ethiopia. One of the main reasons we have repeatedly touched upon this exquisite site, a place located so far from the academically claimed civilizations, who some daring academics would even attempt to claim as the builders of such. Its remarkably remote location alone could be seen as a smoking gun in regards to a conspiracy regarding the chronology of man. However, what we find even more incredible regarding this site, the fact that the site is renowned for its obelisks, often named in mainstream reports as the site of a singular obelisk of Axum, instead of the accurate plural, obelisks of Axum. A ruse mystery history suspects is due to the toppled obelisk. Not only are there many obelisks at the site, so sharing it online as merely the site of the quote, obelisk of Axum, is not only inaccurate, but we feel clearly an attempt to stifle people's discovery of this toppled obelisk, which has been estimated to have weighed hundreds, possibly upwards of a thousand tons in weight, 
once carved, transported, and erected at the site. Located in a place now known today as Aksum City, it is located within the northern regions of Ethiopia, found within the northern Stele Park. Furthermore, the obelisks alone contain even more evidential features to indicate that these structures were not only built by a lost civilization, but the same civilization, possibly responsible for the Great Pyramid's construction and many other ancient ruins throughout the world, for these perplexing false doors permeate the world's ancient foundations. Any ancient site which we come across during our explorations of antiquity, adorned with false doors, we know are extremely old ruins. False doors permeate nearly all ancient sites and ruins throughout the globe, and their true purpose for being remains a complete mystery. Additionally, if the fact that false doors indicative of the ancient pyramid builder's architectural signature and the toppled obelisk weighing hundreds of tons is not enough compounding evidence to convince you that the site was once the work of a lost civilization. The underground chambers at the site, actually created using polygonal masonry, should be the final nail in the investigative pursuit for all, thus directly connecting polygonal builders to architectural signatures found throughout the globe, most notably ancient Peru, even Giza and the Great Pyramids. Who were these elusive builders? Obelisks are clearly indicative of an ancient Egyptian construction, yet regardless of the reality that this is a rarely shared factual lead, connecting Axum to the pyramid builders themselves, and indeed the makers of the false doors, and the additional polygonal masonry, is an incredibly interesting link. Due to previous research, we know particularly regarding the casing stones in Giza, the polygonal casing stones upon the pyramids were of a significantly younger age than the highly eroded sandstone pyramids. Yet, here it is in the same build which displays false doors, a feature which does, in fact, date from the same era, a perplexing enigma to unravel. It is a mystery which we find highly compelling.